talking jackets hockey. And um, my gift to you, CBJ fans, right now, Cam Atkinson joining me on the program. Cam, good to have you on, buddy. Let's start with the fact uh, that you missed today. What uh, What's going on? Where are you health-wise? You got people scared a little bit. <laughs> no, everything's good. Uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, Going to be skating tomorrow. Just a little precautionary, minor little injury, but uh, that's about it. Cam Atkinson joining me on the program today. Uh, it's been an interesting week for you, I would think. Um, you, the camp starts. Just kind of take me through that. You get the call. Lockout's over. Camp's going to start on Sunday. You're playing a game that counts six days after camp starts. What What's going through your mind as this thing is, is progressing at such a rapid rate? Obviously a little bit of a whirlwind, but uh, I'm definitely – um excited that I got to play for Springfield for about 33 games just to kind of, you know, get my legs going and uh, be in mid-season shape form. Um, but as soon as I got the call, obviously I was very excited to start heading up for Columbus and uh, get the ball rolling here. Cam, the one thing that you've done every place you've been is score goals and do so at a rapid rate. Last year, you didn't do it as much for the Blue Jackets as I anticipated you would. How difficult was it for you to not be up here helping this team when you had to feel like you could have helped? Yeah, I think it was just a little frustrating. I would say I would have liked to score more goals, but um, it was my first year pro, so I was just kind of getting familiar with you know the style of play and how quick uh, everyone plays. But uh, I think I settled down the last two or three weeks of the actual season and uh, really started playing my game and felt comfortable and felt like I belonged. Uh, in the NHL, especially with Columbus, but uh, would have loved to help the team out last year as much as I could. But uh, being down with Springfield, I think it definitely benefited me um, because when I did get that call to play the last two months or so, um, you know, I was ready to go. Yeah, you certainly were. Um, this is a franchise, as you know, that has not had the success that the franchise would want or that the fan base would want. The one thing that I think is nice right now about this club is it's it almost feels a bit like a franchise reset. So many new faces coming in. There's all this young talent. Uh, you mentioned playing in Springfield. You guys were getting it done out there. You talk about you. You talk about Ryan Joe, Ryan Johansson. You talk about Johnny Moore. You talk about Savard. Um, the the pit, obviously Ryan Murray can't play this year because of the the shoulder. But there there's some some nice young talent. Kind of just talk a little bit to the fans a little bit about this young group of guys that are kind of growing together, and you're one of the ringleaders of that group. Yeah, I think it's very important for a franchise to have young players and to be successful, and uh, that's what we did down in Springfield. And, um, you know, down in Springfield is where you learn the game and uh, just get better overall as a player. You know, you want to work on defensive end as much as you can, and I think that enables you to do so. But uh, it's definitely important to have young guys be successful, and uh, hopefully we can kind of translate that to uh, right now with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Talking with Cam Atkinson, forward for the CBJ. So last year you get the call up the last two months. Um, this year you start camp. You've been on the first line the whole time, haven't you? Is it you and Braz and Umby, right? Yep. That's pretty yep. cool. And I, I think – uh, that had to be cool for you and a nice affirmation of the talent that you believe you have. One thing I enjoy about you, I remember talking to you this summer on the TV side, and um, I, I think we got done doing the interview, and I said, you just continue to be exactly how you are and you won't have any trouble. You're a confident dude, and it had to be good to get the, the, the pushback from, from Coach Richards and the organization that you deserve to be on that top line. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm very you know thankful and fortunate and uh... Obviously, playing with Brass and Umby, we had some success at the end of last season, and uh, hopefully we continue to have success and just, uh, you know, work with each other day in, day out, and get comfortable playing with each other and, uh, you know, score some goals and win some games for the club because, uh, you know, we're definitely capable, and uh, it's going to be a fun season. Obviously, like you said, a lot of new fresh faces, uh, a lot of young guys, and, um, you know, that's what uh, that's what you want. You want uh, some good energy and um, you want to be able to come to the rink and have some fun and work hard with these guys. And, uh, you know, that's what we've been doing for the last week or so. And uh, we're going to continue to do it for uh, the whole season. Cam, the, the the skeptic in me would say Rick Nash is no longer with this team. Where are the goals going to come? Uh, we had Todd Richards on. And he said, look, every that's a legitimate question. Everybody's got to step up. Everyone's got to carry carry their weight a little bit. As you've been through these first few days of camp, who are guys who you kind of have – 
have noticed, and maybe you're one of those guys who who have put it on them a little bit to take up some of that slack and some of that scoring load. Well, obviously with uh, Rick Nashville, even if you can't replace a guy like him, uh, he's a 30-plus goal scorer every year, but um, you know that uh, brings a challenge to the rest of the team, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's uh, going to be everyone contributing. It's not going to be one or two guys because we're going to need everyone going, everyone stepping up, and because uh, everyone's capable of doing it. So, um, you know, no really standouts. I think everyone's been working their their bag off day in day out, and everyone seems to be chipping in. And uh, hopefully, we can uh, get a lot of those guys chipping in uh, start of the season to the end. And is it the same way, Cam, talking with Cam Atkinson, the Jackets forward, is it the same way with leadership? They're not going to have a captain this year. I know John Davidson was big on that. Let's see who kind of emerges. Um, have you seen that with leadership as well, where where it's being doled out and a lot of guys trying to step up and, and more of a leadership by committee? Yeah, I would say so. You know, you got a lot of guys that have been around um, the league and with the Blue Jackets for a long time. And um, I guess, you know, they obviously are comfortable um, speaking out and just leading by example. Um, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of, uh, candidates for leadership. Um, you know, I wouldn't really single out anyone specifically to be the captain. Um, but you know, obviously there's a couple guys that stand out in my mind. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's such a short season that, you know, we really want to focus on winning games and doing what we have to do to win games and not so much on the leadership because the leadership will come, um, for sure. And that's just, um, you know, how guys are, you know, they were right. born born to be leaders, so that will come. We just got to focus on winning games. Yeah, that's going to be a big part of it. Obviously, you got a little bit of social media love this weekend. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but Bob McKenzie of TSN, and, and for obviously you know who he is, but our listeners, some who may not, uh, the diehard hockey fans obviously do. He's one of the voices in Canada when it comes to the NHL and prospects, and um, he had some big words to say f- with you on Twitter. And I saw John Bucciagross, the ESPN guy, did as well. Um, both of those guys with high praise for you and what you're going to be able to do this year. You're a type of guy who, in the very little interaction I've had with you, it seems to me that you'd be somebody who would really want that, who would thrive on that. When you have, like, a Bob McKenzie, who I know you probably respect the hell out of, when you have a guy like that saying good things about you, what does it do for you? Obviously, it uh, builds your confidence. And um, when you have, you know, Butchie Ross and uh, Bob McKenzie saying nice things about you, you know, you want to (laughs) obviously – do as well as you can just to prove them right and uh, the fact that they have confidence in you it definitely shows that you know you can play the game but uh, you don't want to let them down and um, you know everything's based so much highly on Twitter and uh, so to interact with those guys it's uh, it's pretty fun to do that. What are you at on Twitter followers right now Cam? I think I just reached 12,000. Oh god we got to get you better you need to be at at least 25,000 by let's say by May. You want? I can help you. We'll help you out with that. Uh, sounds good to me. We'll get you to twenty five thousand by May. This will be our pledge drive. That'd be awesome. All right, brother. Hey, good luck. You're going to play Saturday, right? Barring any sort of setback. Yep. Yep. Playing Saturday. All right. Good luck. Keep it up. Keep up. Uh, keep it up in camp as well. We appreciate you taking the time, Cam. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Cam Atkinson, Jackets forward. You're going to love him. Great personality. Full of confidence. He's going to be a guy you're going to be able to get behind.